Hi folk, David Johnson here again. Uh, this is the second picture that I said we were doing in the series. Uh, it's a umbrella thorn and once again it's also as in with the, um, the baobab picture we're going to be doing a sort of in a sepia style. <clears throat> so uh, this is the painting, we'll, this is the end product that we'll be lo looking at right now and so we kick off from the beginning. Uh, the paper I'm using is a De La Rowney mount board uh, the colour is a dove grey and the size is a 40 by 15. So we start off with a sketch, just a very rough uh, horizon sketch, uh, where we <clears throat> use a pastel pencil. Please folk no pencils itself, because the pencil, uh, graphite pencil, the marks actually come through on the paper, so you can't do that there. Uh, we kick off with a Rembrandt burnt umber number 10, and uh, basically all my clouds I do at the base we have this, this, this whether it's a, a storm cloud or a blue skies, whatever, I always start off with the burnt umber at the base. Um, but you will see I'm using different pressures so that I'm getting different grades of, of the, the color. Uh, and that, that burnt umber, believe it or not, will actually be my shadow colors within the clouds. So that's a sort of a sort of a middle of the range color, and uh, then when we put the other highlights on, you'll find that that, that will actually become the shadow of the clouds. Um, as I said, we're doing a sort of a sepia style, so I'm I'm moved on now to burnt umber number nine. Just rub it on very r roughly, so that we put on just enough so that when we rub it like I am doing now, uh, there's enough of the uh, uh, well the paper is 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 is, is, is full, filled up. The whole tooth is filled up. Felt that the uh, burnt the burnt umber was a little bit strong, so I've lightened it with a bit of light orange number nine, uh, just to give it a little bit of softness. We move on to the highlights of the clouds itself, and I'm using a deep yellow or a lemon yellow number twelve. Okay, the the, the colours are practically white, but both of them have just got this that touch of yellow within them uh, which which will gives us a nice warm white okay so just normal white tends to be a little bit on the um, uh, the insipid side so I like to use um, e either of those uh, uh, yellows in that thing um, now you can actually start to see the uh, the how the burnt umber now is actually becoming the shadow color of the actual clouds themselves uh, you might have seen earlier on there was a little scratch in the paper um, yeah we've kind of covered it over so that's that it's we disguised it camouflaged it so it's not a problem there um, now moving on to the the distant bush line uh, and I'm still sort of wanting to keep that um, 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 I can say that uh, warm feel to it so I've stayed away from cold colors okay so we kicked off initially there with a burnt umber number nine and uh, now I'm using a burnt umber number five Okay, I'm using a light orange 0.9, uh, just an underpainting, under color that we're doing for the grasses that is to come. Uh, obviously, we'll be putting in our shadows and our other highlights. So it's it's a color that we use just to, how can I say, just to create a bit of warmth uh, at the base of, of, of the grass. So I'm moving back to the burnt amber number five. And what I'm doing now is I'm creating a bushes and trees but that are a little bit more forward than the distant ones there, okay and so we use color perspective we actually do the color a bit darker uh, press a bit harder and uh, we do a little bit less rubbing so the distant bush a lot of rubbing make it soft get it far away uh, as we come forward less and less uh, rubbing more and more de texture okay? and that helps you with the distance in the picture it will always work for a nice distance in your picture Right, so you can just see I'm just using my little finger there just to give it a soft soft rub just breaking up the the silhouette of the trees but there's still you can still see the little bit of textures that are in the inside right so now moving on to a little bit of highlights within the trees itself and once again I want that sort of warm uh, feel to come through I'm using a burnt sienna 0.8 and it's just a matter of skimming it over the top but please remember don't over highlight okay so you leave those little bits of shadows behind there okay so now we're using actually a yellow orchid number five um, and uh, it's just giving you that little bit of extra oomph uh, just so the combination of them works very very nicely the colors blend in beautifully together and uh, we uh, back to the uh, uh, burnt umber number five 
uh, holding my pestle on the side at a 45 degree angle and I'm getting those branches and stuff in there. So you also it's important when doing those branches you must make sure uh, where the branches are coming that behind that you've got a bit of lightness okay, so that you can actually see them. All right, you don't want to camouflage them against a lot of dark. That are there. You can see how nicely those, uh, the trunks of the tree and those branches uh, stand out against the background bush there. Putting in a bit of uh, yellow ochre on top of those distant bushes there, just to give it that little extra bit of contrast, an extra bit of colour. Uh, but preserve your shadows, folk. Preserve your shadows. Taking that yellow ochre and putting that on top of the grass, and you can see that just underneath that bush line, I've kept the yellow away from there, uh, so that we can. It helps to give the uh, give us that extra uh, distance that's, that's coming through. It's just being that a slightly lighter colour. But we move on to the foreground and what we are using now is a burnt umber number three and we work it in so that it is on that ridge that I've got coming down there and we, may, we also work it that it actually covers over a portion of that distant bush line, right? That sort of helps with the perspective of your the picture itself. And working in the little bushes and etc that are going to be underneath the tree, we just use the texture, I'm holding the pastel flat on its side and I use the texture to uh, give it that illusion of, of, of leaves. Okay. Now just to create, working on top of that um, um, yellow ochre that I had there and the two sort of blend together and give us a shadow type of uh, area there just using my finger there just to give it a little bit of a rub not too much just a little little bit of a rub right okay now i'm creating the sort of shadow areas for the grass in the foreground there remember the grass is because of perspective the grass in the foreground it's going to be a little bit longer and i just take that mars violet and i just skim it over fuck you can see it's very very soft okay so you don't want to put it on hard um, and you just to take it that you just it's a skimming motion okay i'm holding the pastel horizontal and i'm just it, it's just sliding it over the top of the existing colors that are there giving it a slight rub with your little finger and it will then create that start to create that sort of long grass effect that we got there all right we'll come back to that there i'm going on to the bushes then and i'm putting in a bit of yellow ochre um, and leaving behind just little bits of that burnt umber behind but be creating sort of the uh, the, the color of the bushes now it's going to be a, a sort of a warmish color and i'm just softening that burnt umber i don't like to keep the burnt umbers very very strong in that they always like to soften it with uh, other, other other colors all right so i'm using that yellow ochre once again and i'm just on top of that um, uh, that grass the shadow grass you can see that i'm just sliding it over and the, the two are blending but i'm leaving behind just little bits of shadow here and there so that you still got that effect okay so you always need a shadow to manifest the light okay so um, always 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 remember that Okay, so I'm just putting a little bit of highlight in there. I'm using a light orange number nine. Just skimming it over and then we'll come on later and we'll just finish that off. But you can really start to see that we're getting that illusion of, of, of grass coming through there. Very important um, also with your to the, with the grass to uh, silhouette it against those darks. Okay, right, I'm moving on to the tree now. And you can see I'm putting in markers. I found that most necessary because what happens is you don't put a marker on and suddenly your tree starts to grow and grow and eventually it's going out of the picture uh, and you don't want to do that. All right, so uh, the markers help me just to keep the boundaries and then I'm able then to uh, work around it so that um, I keep the tree within proportion so that it doesn't become too wide or too high or whatever the case may be. Uh, the umbrella thorn is an interesting tree. It is a very thick canopy. Uh, it's almost unique in a lot of ways. And the proportions of the tree is that the canopy is approximately twice as long as what the height is of the tree. So it's like a one to two. But that's, that's in a sort of a youngish sort of tree. Uh, the more mature trees, they can go up to one to three, one to three and a half. Um, and I've even seen them at one to four and a half. So, uh, but that's an abnormally big tree. So we just uh, rather stay away from the abnormals. 
and just keep it more or less within the what is a sort of uh, recognized common sort of size etc you can see now I'm using the uh, burnt umber once again uh, for the branches and the trunk of the tree and I'm using a 45 degree angle all right so the pastel has got a nice sharp edge on the on the tip of the pastel and I'm using that to actually paint in my branches and my my trunk uh, make sure that your branches go from thick to, to thinner so in other words we get a uh, you get the trunk of the tree that's one sort of thickness and then the branches that come off they are just a tad thinner and then the next ones that come off are a little bit thinner and thinner so you can't have a, th a thick branch then uh, suddenly a thin one and another thick one okay it doesn't work like it it's that's, that's illegal right so you can see now i'm sort of starting to put in a little bit of shape into the tree now i've, I've given it a little bit of character i haven't used the trunk of the tree in that they just like a straight up and down gum tree pole uh, give it a bit of character sort of almost like a bonsai effect right? so um, i'm working now on the uh, the tip of the tree and and i'm using a, 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 raw, a raw sienna uh, and number three and it's just giving it a little bit of highlight you can start to see now I'm starting to form the tree remember you need a lot of highlights a lot of um, uh, how can I say uh, variations actually in the in the actual leaves themselves to give you that, that three-dimensional look otherwise it looks like a, just a flat silhouette working in the burnt sienna uh, number eight on top of that uh, giving it a little bit of warmth but you can see i'm leaving behind those darks underneath they eh? be very very important especially if you're looking up t into a tree from from down below all right uh, also very important with your bushes to have a a, a soft edge a silhouette and you can see now i'm using that uh, raw sienna and i'm just skimming it over the over the paper and i'm softening out those bushes all right so you don't have that hard 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 edge there um, coming once again now I'm sort of starting to really work on that uh, top of that tree and using the yellow ochre again and you can see how I'm leaving behind those those dark areas there so it's, it's a building up process you'll see I'll use a number of colors to actually get the final product uh, and it's that that sort of um, uh, I can see that variation uh, that gives you the realism within the tree itself so now I'm wanting a little bit more strength and a little bit more color into the, the into the so I'm using an orange uh, and it is I'm working it now on top of that and you can start to see now um, that I'm leaving behind you can still see all the other colors that I put on there can you see that nice under dark under canopy there um, right we're going to put in a little bit of a termite mount here and using the same color again and we'll we have to uh, work on that putting in highlights and shadows etc okay which I'm using now I'm using a raw sienna for the shadow areas and we'll come later on with our highlight areas back to my burnt umber number three now you always have these little wayward branches especially with these these uh, umbrella thorns coming from underneath the tree uh, sort of hanging down uh, and it also helps you create that 3d 3d effect uh, in your in your picture itself so I'm once again holding the pastel 45 degrees and I'm getting a nice sharp edge coming through on the, uh, the, the the edges of the tree itself putting those uh, bent umber back in on those bushes there underneath the tree because remember that's in shadow all right uh, those bushes right up at the right there that's in sunlight oh okay, you always have dead branches that in, in the bush okay so um, just putting one in here it just helps with the uh, character of the actual picture itself always be careful with the dead branches that you don't put too many branches in just keep it simple I don't don't overdo it. I've just found that sometimes we try and copy a dead tree in that day and we use all these multitudes of branches and eventually it becomes just uh, too busy. All right, so remember that. I'm trying to balance the picture with a bit of burnt over bush with a, a dark burnt um, burnt over number three, and then that sort of dead man's land there between the distant bush and our uh, dead tree there. Uh, we putting in a bit of distant bush. And I'm using the uh, burnt umber number five once again. Uh, that till there we'll come to do some highlights on it there. And the termite mound uh, must be the same color as your sand. Good. Then uh, we are looking at the uh, bush that we've got there on the left hand side. And we are working in a little bit of highlights but it's the same process in a lot of ways as the tree that we did there and probably a little bit of less color not so much color on there 
All right, so here I am back. I'm back to my uh, bird sienna, and I'm working that in now on top of the uh, the the, uh, the tree itself, in the, in the areas where there's uh, sunlight is catching the canopy. Right, you don't want to leave any uh, dark shadow areas at the top, and the exterior of it, um, and so that because that all of that area is in sunlight. All right. What I'm doing now is the uh, the sort of shadow areas of the of the tree trunk itself. Uh, I'm using a bit of burnt sienna for that as well. Um, if you're finding that it, you're struggling to get it to go on, just give it a light spray, a fixative spray, um, a bit of hairspray or a bit of alcohol, and you'll find that it'll work quite quite well. Okay, so doing the highlight areas for the uh, tree itself, so the branches, the trunk of the tree that's catching the, 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 the sunlight, uh, we, we put that in. We'll come back a little bit later on and we're going to do a little bit of uh, shadow area uh, coverage there as well. Using the uh, burnt, uh, uh, the sorry, orange light number nine there, um, just especially underneath the tree there, just giving us some some a uh, little bit of extra highlight, uh, extra contrast, so that the uh, the eye goes there. And I'm going to work my yellow orca on top of that, so that the yellow orca will be actually just slightly softer than the rest of the grass. We would like to create a sort of a, a focal point, so it's, you always work on contrast, contrast, contrast. Very, very, very important. There you can see that yellow orchid coming in, so you can still see the little bits of shadow grass. I haven't taken them away, uh, but it's just an upward flicking motion. Folk, don't spend hours painting in little bits of blades of grass. Just hold your pestle flat down and just flick it up, okay, so you get that automatic grass effect coming. You could go back afterwards sometimes, here and there, just put in a few extra blades of grass, um, that, that that will give you that, um, uh, that, that that effect, but you don't do it all over all over the show. You'll see later on, just here and there, where you put a little bit of extra in. Okay, so we're using a bit of back to my um, yellow ochre and uh, just putting those, those those little bits of colours in there, and then the, creating a bit of a road there coming through. Okay, so um, holding my pastel vertical, and I just move it side to side. Remember your your your, cont your um, perspective in terms of linear perspective, so that it's big in the foreground. As you go away, the uh, pathways become thinner and thinner. Okay, so our picture's starting to take shape now. I'm getting those highlights in, and uh, I want you to see that all the way through, what we're doing is we're creating contrast. So contrast, so the tree is beautifully contrasted against the sky, uh, and all the other bushes are con have, a, have a measure of contrast as well. Okay, so just taking that yellow ochre all the way through. So it's a sort of a, a combination effect of the two. So um, when you can see when you put those colors on, it almost gives you a, that yellowy sort of effect. Okay, so it won't, please don't over highlight. Okay, just here, yeah, see, I'm just touching it, just touching it, touching it here and there, catching the tops of the trees, okay. important on your your lights coming from the uh, right hand side so the left side of the grass uh, in the, uh, the the road itself will have a little bit of shadow there you can see I've actually just put that little bit of shadow there and we used a uh, once again a Mars violet number seven right so creating a bit of a fence area here uh, when you do fences and gates do them nice and, and uneven um, don't have them all nice and straight and perfect and drawn with a ruler. Uh, the more untidy, the, the, the better it is. You'll see I went to those highlights where the gate is going to come now. Uh, you must sort that out before you come in with your gates. Okay, so same with your sky and your trees, etc., all the rest of it. All right, so you have, at the gates, you usually have that down uh, the actual main post and then a, the one's 45 degrees supporting it. All right, so for the, for the uh, actual wire itself, you can see I just held the pastel and almost dragged it across the paper. Uh, it's not, not essential that you sort of get a really, really fine, fine, fine line there. Uh, it's too far away actually really to see properly. So uh, I used that pencil just to give me a bit of extra shadow in the grass next to the where the road is. And now I've come with a orange light number nine. 
taking those colours through and now I'm putting highlights in the distant bush and the tree there and in uh, our dead tree as well. Uh, so just remember just to keep it, your lights coming from the, from the right, keep, make sure your, all your highlights are on the right hand side of, the, of whatever you, you're doing there. All right. Okay, it's just a gentle, gentle motion. Okay. Using a bit like a forty-five degree angle. Back to my raw umber. Sorry, my, my yellow ochre. And now, now we start to do this sort of finishing touches now with our grass itself. Okay, so I want you to see there that I'm, I'm leaving behind little bits of those highlight colours and the shadow colours. So the three, the combination of them is actually going to give us a um, that sort of kaleidoscope of light and shadow and we're going to then be seeing the uh, the grass as it should be. I'm now doing a little bit of branches. You have a look very especially at these these trees. You'll get branches coming on the edges of the, of the crown of the tree. You've got these branches protruding out. Um, and I specifically do them uh, in the center of the tree coming forward. All right, so that helps you to, with your foreshortening uh, so that you've got that uh, effect of the branches coming towards you. All right, now I'm doing a little bit of uh, specific detail now. Okay, so I only do it where, where the, you can see it. Okay, so I do it up against a, um, a bush or whatever the case may be. But you can see that's all where I've done it. I haven't done it anywhere else. Good. So we into the final colour of the actual tree itself, and this is the cinnabar green, uh, number five, lovely colour. Uh, but now because I have the other colours on there, uh, this is not a bright, bright, bright green, right? So uh, uh, in the African bush, the trees don't have those very, very bright green. So I've used the texture of the uh, canopy of the tree there to actually give me that uh, effect of the of the leaves that are there. So it's just a matter of skimming, skimming. So if you if you if you can't get texture, just give it a light spray, uh, and that'll do the job for you. All right. So I use a bit of uh, raw sienna for the shadow part of the trunk of the tree and the branches. Good. So um, you can see that contrast between the bright, warm colour of the uh, light orange, and as opposed to the uh, muted colour of the raw sienna. Okay. The uh, we're moving in now to sort of the final finishing touches there. Um, we need to put a little bit of extra highlights in the grass itself. And I'm using a orange light number nine. And you can see I'm just flicking it through so you can still see my Mars violet. You can still see my yellow ochre. All right, so that's that's all you need to do. Uh, you don't have to spend hours and hours painting any of your little blade of grass. Right. And then we go back to our little pencil that we used as well. Um, and we then just creating those uh, little final, 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 final branches, uh, especially on the bushes as, as well. Um, and you can see also on the left of the tree there, I had a branch which actually cuts across the distant bushes there. It all helps with your perspective and, and the sort of three-dimensional look. All right. So I always like to do my signature on the right-hand side of the and uh, have a, le a signature that's legible folk don't have these fancy signatures and nobody can read who it is uh, remember your name's all about uh, your reputation as an artist okay and uh, so you, you can see how important it is to have those little edges on the silhouettes of the edges of the bushes those little branches coming down um, and then i'm putting in some grass now uh, that is in shadow uh, you can't really 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 see it uh, but it is a, um, it, it's, it's, it's there, but it's not there, if you understand what I mean. And uh, yeah, so we're almost there, and uh, I think uh, the pictures sort of come out pretty good. And so let's have a look at the final one. All right, so this is the final completed picture, uh, and I'm most happy with it. I think it's actually come out fine. Please note in the trees, all those colors are there, so it's a nice warm color all uh, picture all over. Uh, bushes nice and silhouetted, nice and soft and edge. So may I invite you to join my Patreon David Johnson Art Tutorials 
uh, we go through trees, for instance, there's a brilla thorn that we've done. I've just given you a brief version. Uh, there, it's very in depth. I'll give you all the characteristics of the tree, uh, and in that way, you're able to paint a, a, a credible umbrella thorn. But it's not only that, uh, we go into detail, we're doing a whole series of trees at the moment. Uh, it's going to be good fun. Just like to see you there. Anyway, I trust you enjoyed this picture, and uh, may you just uh, have a bit of fun doing it. Uh, God bless you.